Hi and welcome to this new tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can use uh, audio as a modifier for uh, animating stuff. It could be rotating, it could be transforming, it could be morphing. Uh, in this case I'm going to show you an example on, on how to use it for morphing of course because this is audio and I thought why not uh, try model a speaker and try to animate that. So I will uh, try sub patch uh, uh, making a sub patch speaker here. So let's just try out here. See if we can shape a nice big speaker here. And we need a membrane here, or membrane, or whatever it's called. And we need some small here. And to for this to become sub patch, I'm going to just put down here and here and. And here again, I'm now going to hit P for polygon. And then we got this low polygon shape here where I can go and drag around a bit, adjust this here, so on, until we get a decent shape. This looks pretty neat. I'll then layer this, and I can see here it's a little off center, so I'll drag this in. As a numeric here, I'll set this to 12. It's flipped right now, but that doesn't matter. We'll just fix that. So, return, and F for flip, and we now have a speaker. I'm then going to kill the backdrop here, like this, and we could perhaps just make a quick speaker box here for this speaker. this and I'm going to cut a hole in the speaker box here setting up a disk like this boolean subtract cut out kill this and speaker box. Let's make this dark. It's a little darker here but we'll fix that. And here we'll just take this and hit the uh, tab key to sub patch and we have the speaker and for this now I need to do the morphing for the shape. So this is the general shape and I'll hit the M key for morph Make a new morph and set speaker in and I will select this here and I'll just go up here and say uh, expand, 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 expand and do this a few times and now I'm out on the middle of the membrane here and I'll Drag this in a bit, then I'll contract. Oops, and I'll drag this in a bit, like this, and we got a new shape. I'll expand again a bit and drag 
this one entirely in like this. So we now got the two states here. I would like this to be a bit bigger, but that would be in the base here. Scale this up. 142. Let's check the morph here. It follows. That's fine. I would like this to stick a bit more out. Like this. Check the morph. That's okay. And I will set surface for speaker. Uh, this might be my color setup that's a little bit uh, wrong. We'll uh, take a look at it into layout. But I'll first save this as audio uh, speaker. And I will send this to layout. As you see here, it's all black. Um, I will lighten this up a bit and I'll make this somewhere in between and of course on the speaker I will turn on smooth give it a big spirularity and soften it up and under the P for properties for the speaker I will need to set the geometry here let's just in the viewport here set it to 6 you can do it for the render also so it will soften out a bit. That's one thing now, because this is a morphing, we need to set the subdivision order, because right now it's first, and that's going to mess up our model in the bit if we morph. Um, so I'm going to set this to subpatch last, because then it's not going to be ruined by the deformation. I'm then going to uh, go up here to the scene editor, I open this, and down here we have a little panel called audio. Load audio and I'm going to load to a track in here so we can hear it in the layout. This is also good for if you want to key animate some, some uh, speech or something you can morph a mouth with uh, vocals A, I, E and O and whatnot, and then morph between those using the audio here. Um, I'll set this to 5000 just so we can see we have down here the audio and if I scroll you can hear the audio of course this is 5000 frames so I skip a lot when I scroll here but if I press play you can hear the music so this audio we are going to set to control this uh, base uh, speaker here, so uh, I'm going to hit the P for properties and I'm going to deform and I'm going to set here as the morph mixer down way down here and you see here I have one endomorph which I set up in the modeler so I go in here and I can close this I'm now going to the envelope here and it's way big and as you see I have audio here in uh, the scene I can scroll down a bit so we see the 100% here which is to be the top of the morph otherwise it will distort too much so what I'm going to do here is going to modifiers and I'm going to audio channel and I'm going to load in my the same audio file here into uh, the model or the layout here and you're going to see some curves here I can scroll in a bit you can see it's not very high right now so what I can do is I can boost the waveform here say 7 just to check and see if there's someone that passes 100 that's a few but not much and that can be arranged there of course are a lot more keys than you see here. If I zoom in, 
you will see there's a whole bunch of keys moving around. But I'll just take this here and I'll go up to keys and I'll say bake selected curve. By doing this I'm turning all this into keyframes. And we then have a problem because all this here is going from 0 to 100 but down here we are going to minus 100 and that's going to give a negative morph of our object. So what I want to do here is I want to take my right mouse here from a 0 and I'm going to select all the keys below here and I'm straight going to delete those like this. So I only have the morphs here between uh, 0 and 100. That's a view that is going a, a bit further up, 150, where you can go and edit these and drag them down a bit and so on. You can also scale some of this, but you can get the general picture here of how this is working. So, if I close down here and close down here, you'll see something rather interesting now. Let's try to hit play here and see if this stuff is working. And as you see now, the speaker is moving to the music. Uh, let me just show you here, if you haven't had set um, on the geometry here, the subdivision to last, you're going to get some annoying edges here. Let's just set this to first and you'll see you might get some artifacts here. Not that bad, if I had a, a stronger edge here you would have seen, but it's, it's pretty decent still, but you might have some problems and if that's the case you need to uh, set this up uh, patch division 2 last. I'll do this for safety, still to get a smooth uh, object. Um, I'll say, th um, say if I use this, I could also add this uh, as a light source. Um, let's say a point light here and move this out here. And I could then turn this into flare and so on. I'm not sure I am displaying lens flares here. Did it? In the viewport. Intensity. I see no lens flare right now, but there might be a reason for that. But I bet you'll still see the effect on the wall. If I now go here and I say intensity here, I want again audio, select the audio file and I want to, oh I can't set this scale here, that's not good, so I'll do something different, I will go into my object here to the endomorph here and I'm going to copy this. Haha, <laughs> got your new tick. And I'm going to light properties and I'm going to paste it here. I don't know why new tick couldn't do this, but uh, or light of couldn't do this, but what the hell, we fixed it anyway. So, you will see now that my lights also changing here. I can perhaps try see why I don't get... oh, that's right. Uh, volumetric uh, and lens flares is only showing in the camera view, not in perspective. So that's why I go to frame zero. I'll select the lights. I had some keyframes on that, move it to zero and I'll take the camera here, drag it around so you can see 
the both <coughs> sorry move that to zero and we try again See now, stuff is happening both to the speaker and to the light. <coughs> Sorry, I got a sore throat, so yeah. But um, again, that's about it. So I hope you can use this for something great inside Lightwave. Have fun. <laughs>